Good morning dolls and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So in my previous video I made hats for the dress shop and I thought we would need a few hat boxes to go along with those hats. So that's what we're doing today. Now dolls I will leave a link in the description for when I made the hats and bonnets from paper and scraps. So today we're going to be making hat boxes from wallpaper remnants and pastel paper scraps. Now, in this instance, the technique is very similar. You want to focus on the part of the technique where you make the crowns, and you're going to make a top part and a bottom part. And in order for the lid to fit on top of the bottom part, you're going to need to make your second part of the box a little bit smaller. Now, here I've already made a lid, and I'm actually putting the wallpaper on it. Now, when I do the wallpaper for the bottom of my circle, I glue a piece that's bigger and then I trim it off. Now here I've already added it to the sides and this piece of paper was a true remnant. So I used two pieces to add it around the sides. Now I am using my fabric fix glue because it catches really fast. And I did clamp it down with the clothespins to make sure that it laid flush and that those seams connected really neatly. Now, this is a system that you're going to have to take your time on, dolls. I did make quite a few of these lids and bottoms, but you get a really, really great result, but you do have to take your time. It's not a difficult project, but it is a little bit tedious. And you see, I'm putting those clothespins on the edge so that it'll dry. In addition to making the hat boxes, I did make a couple other containers, and I used little buttons. I filled in the buttonholes with wood putty and then sanded it and painted it to a color that coordinated with the paper. Now you see here I have several hat boxes that need to be papered. So I generally do the boxes and the lids first and then I do all the different papers. But I'm showing you here I have several different sizes and I encourage you when you're working on something like this do lots of them and give them a lot of variation. Concentrate on one part at a time Get all of your circles cut, do all of your sides, do all of the lids, and then you start to paper your actual containers. And you see here, I'm working on this blue one. I papered it, and now I'm doing the bottom part of the one that I made a lid for a little bit earlier. Now, if you run into a situation where you've made a bottom and the lid doesn't fit properly, I'm showing you here how I use my template to size the top of my lid. And after the circle is cut, you put the strip of paper on the outside of the circle to make sure it fits neatly around the outside of the bottom of the box. Now you may notice I have serial card or chipboard for some of the circles, but the majority of my pieces were made with chalk pastel paper. The pastel paper is softer than chipboard and more flexible. So I think it gives the little boxes a nice weight and it papers really well. Now, as you can see here, I'm using a lot of scraps and remnants from wallpaper projects that I've had in my other doll houses. Now here I'm using scraps and remnants, but you may have some papers you're not particularly fond of as wallpaper, but they would be really great for hat boxes. And that's what I found with several of these. This blue paper was from the bathroom in the rooming house. And you can see in the background, I'm using also that same paper that I used that I lined the suitcases with that looks like cotton ticking. Now, if you haven't seen the suitcase video, I will leave a link in the description so you can see that. Now, dolls, this is the same technique that I use for the crowns of the hats. We're just using paper instead of fabric. And fabric is definitely a good option for doing a project like this. But for me, the papers are simpler and they're a little bit easier for me to work with and cut into the shapes that I'm trying to achieve. Now dolls, as you can see, my circles aren't perfect, my seams aren't perfect, none of it is perfect, but I'm telling you, it's gonna be really cute in the end. Now see here I have it where the lid fits on top of that. That was wallpaper from the nursery. This is wallpaper from the dining room, scraps from the dining room, wallpaper, and you see how terribly that circle is cut. I'm going to trim it off a little bit more to round it out, but you won't be able to see it after I get my trim on and all my decorations. I promise you it's going to look really, really cute. And I want to encourage you, dolls, 
as you work, you're going to get better and better at projects, but don't fret if things aren't perfect the first time you do them or the hundredth time you do them. As long as you're having fun and you like your end result, that's all that matters. Now, dolls, I'm really tickled at the way this one came out because even though I didn't like it as wallpaper, it's great as a hat box. So it turns out that wallpaper looked great as a suitcase lining and for hat boxes. So nothing is wasted, dolls. Now here I added a pink velvet ribbon around this wallpaper from the children's room and added a little lace. And I made a smaller one with that red ribbon. I thought that came out really cute. And then I have this one. It has wallpaper that I used in the hallway video. So, dolls, I'm just having a good time here. I'm actually in another setting where I'm just letting you watch me play. But I want to encourage you to come up with your own designs. Use a variety of materials and a variety of things to see what you can come up with. That's a pretty pearl button. It looks like a lid to me. And here is more of those uh, lids that I made with buttons that I filled with wood putty and sanded them and painted them to be pretty little lids for some of the containers to be sold at the dress shop. I'm getting excited because I'm finally getting to the part that I really, really enjoy the most, which is adding the details. So now I'm starting to pull out my little pieces of flowers and ribbon and bows and roses. I pulled out my bag of possibilities and found even some baby's breath. I always thought they were really pretty delicate little flowers, but they were all kind of plain. So I added a little pink and rose colored acrylic paint. I even did a few of them in purple and allowed it to dry. Now I am using a little wallpaper from a project from my original dollhouse. My original dollhouse, these are scraps from the bathroom. I will leave a link in the description for the original dollhouse tour. And I really love the border and the shades of purple and rose that are in them. And since I don't actually have labels or any kind of branding for my hat boxes, I'm using some of the roses from the wallpaper to look as though there's some type of branding or label from some particular company. Again, dolls, use your imagination. You know, there are times when you don't actually need any words. You just need a symbol that'll represent the icon of some type of a brand or company. So that's what I did with this wallpaper. And as you, I go along, you'll be able to see what I mean. I really like the way this hat box turned out with the purple and that little border at the bottom. And here I am adding the red ribbon around the side. And I added some more of that pastel paper to the inside of the boxes to give them the impression that they were lined. And here I am adding a little ribbon around the edge of one box and just trimming it off nice and neat. Now, what you do as far as detailing your boxes, dolls, is totally up to you. Do as much or as little as you like. Now, this little box would have been perfectly fine just the way it was, but I really don't do well if things are too simple or too plain. I had some pretty purple lace I wanted to use and played around with it a little bit to determine what else I could do with it. So dolls, keep in mind, I had no idea how I was going to decorate this box. After sitting there playing with all the possibilities, I realized the lace was too big. So I cut the lace in little bitty pieces in the little segments of the design and decided to add them to the top of this box. And here I'm adding the fabric tack glue and I'm adding an ample amount because I don't want any of the pieces to flip up. And then I began to just add it around in sort of a flower shaped design on the lid of the box. And I thought it really, really gave a lot of interest to the hat box rather than the way it was originally. And I pressed it down to make sure all the little pieces were embedded in the glue on top of the lid. And I thought that looked really cute. I had another idea for that, but I wanted to allow it to dry. And I kept looking at the little segments and I thought it would be cute on another one of the boxes. So I added a few of the pieces to the rose colored box. Now at this point, dolls, my ideas were just flying every which way. So I was cutting off the borders and I was breaking leaves off of some plastic foliage that I had from, again, other projects, little fake plants, little plastic plants, little rosettes. And I cut them off the stems. I pulled some of the leaves off of some stems. 
So dolls, I'm just leaving this here to show you. You can use absolutely anything to decorate and design your hat boxes. So I glued a few of the little rosette stems to the purple lace and kind of played around with the design as far as the arrangement. I thought a few of those little leaves around with the rosettes would look really pretty and look really cute on the top of the hat box. So I played with a couple different sizes and tucked them there to see how I would like them. And finally, I came up with a design that I thought would look really nice. I added a little fabric fixed glue and then just began to put the pieces together on top of the hat box to complete my design. And I really, really was happy with what I did with this particular hat box. And it really encouraged me and inspired me to go on and have fun with the other boxes. I absolutely love this part. Please disregard my glue malfunction. It is a best practice to use a little stick or toothpick to add your glue sparingly. Then I tied a tiny lavender bow and put it at the bottom of the design just to finish it off. Now dolls, I hope you take the time to try some of these. I can't even explain to you how much fun this was. I had no original designs in my head. I just kind of let it happen as it went along. And you'll know which colors look well together. Now, if you need inspiration, look at some pictures, some old hat boxes, because I tried to do some things that looked a little bit vintage. Now here I made a little bow. This wasn't a perfect bow dolls. I actually have a better technique for making a bow, but this was left over for something else. And I was determined to use it in this project. I added a couple extra loops. And again, dolls, this bow isn't perfect, but I just thought it was cute. And I put it right on the top of that box that I used the cotton ticking and the red velvet trim and added a little bit of my fabric fix glue. Now a little bow that had been discarded from another project found its permanent home on top of a lovely little hat box to go inside the dress shop. I really like the way this hat box turned out. Now here's a smaller one. I didn't have any more of that red satin ribbon so I used some of this other ribbon that I had that had the sheer part in the middle and I made a bigger bow and I laid it across the top and then glued the long pieces down on the side to give the ribbon the impression that it was kind of draping and it was hanging and I thought it turned out cute I thought it made a nice little companion box to that one that I just made with the red satin remnant ribbon on top of it looking like maybe they were part of a gift set or that that would be used to purchase something else and give us a gift. Now I did have this smaller one and I was making it into sort of like a trinket box and I used one of those little lace segments and glued it to the side and used that same technique of adding the little leaves and the rosettes with the flower to the side of the container. And I thought that little, looked really cute where it might look like a little trinket box or a box you might put bracelets or pins or something in on your vanity. I thought something like that would be nice. I figured things like this would be things that you would find in a dress shop or in one of the ladies' bedrooms or on a dresser or vanity. Now with this one, I did the same thing that after I added the one rosette, I did add that little lavender ribbon to the bottom just to finish it off and I think that turned out really cute. Now that the container is finished I did need to add a little bead to the top so that that would be the way to open the lid. Yeah I really like the way that turned out. And here's a close-up of that button I filled in with wood putty. Now down here I'm just kind of giving you a glance at the other things I did. I added the paper, I added lace to the insides of some of them, this blue one, I added a different wallpaper to it. Now this is the part when I got to the point where I was making what I considered my little labels. And that wallpaper had segments in it where they just had roses. And so I cut some of the little roses separately into little squares and pretended that that was my label. And I added it on all of the boxes in different ways just to give the type of impression that I wanted it to have. So this one, I put it on this way. I put it on the top. I added a little cording to be my little handle. On this one, I added it across the top, added more ribbon, and actually gave that one a little ribbon hinge. And then I tried on this one, added a handle to it as well, and added those little roses to the front, again, to look like the label. 
So dolls, there are a lot of different ways you can do things to make your things really interesting. And I want you to take note that my cuts weren't perfect. Everything wasn't perfectly aligned, but I really feel like these turned out really cute. You don't even notice that I cut crooked circles. <laughs> In spite of my lack of perfection and lack of uniformity, I think these will still look great inside the dress shop. Now, dolls, if you enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. Also, like, share, and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.